Welcome, Gold Derby fans. The Emmy nominations have just come out, and I'm here with my colleagues, Ray Richmond, Daniel Montgomery, and Marcus James Dixon to discuss the surprises, what wasn't a surprise. Um, Shogun leading the way with 25 nominations, followed by The Bear with the most ever for a comedy, 23. Great morning for FX. Um, I think that's the first time they've ever led drama and comedy. So what do you guys think? I mean... What else? Talk about like the biggest limited series, True Detective, and what are what are what were the other big nominees this morning? We have Only Murders in the Building with twenty one. I mean, that's wow. Ted so level. That's huge. Um, you mentioned True Detective was in fourth place. Fifth place is The Crown for the final season. Eighteen nominations. Up Set from up six nine. last year. <laughs> up from six. Wow. Yeah. This was a. I mean, I really loved the final season, especially the series finale. It was. It was fantastic. And then Saturday Night Live, seventeen. Fallout six. Actually, a lot of shows have sixteen. Fallout, Hacks, The Morning Show, and I was, I was surprised <laughs> to see Fallout get that many. Yeah. Um, Even though it didn't get either of the guest acting nominations we were predicting for Kyle MacLachlan and Michael Emerson, it still managed to get, and it didn't get Ella Purnell in for lead actress, but it still got 16, I, you know, did incredibly well in creative arts. Well, let's kind of go through some of these categories. Our predictions, our overall odds actually nailed comedy series. We got eight for eight here. Um, it was The Bear, Hacks, Abbott Elementary, Only Murders in the Building, Curb Your Enthusiasm, What We Do in the Shadows, Reservation Dogs, and Palm Royale. Just missing out, The Gentleman, Colin from Accounts, and Girls Five Eva. So, I mean, nothing really to see here. I'm pretty, pretty par for the course. I was glad to see Reservation Dogs get, get one in its last season. I mean, we had been predicting it, but it still had underperformed its first couple of seasons. And now it got this one and it got... Uh, Deferro Wunatai also, um, which was, I think, slightly more of a surprise. And Palm Royale, that was kind of a bubble show. People weren't sure uh if it would if it would make it in, and, and it did. I, I thought maybe loot would have a have a good shot, but it, it got left out here, unfortunately. Interestingly, you know, for all the new shows that got into best drama series, Palm Royale is actually the only freshman show that got into best comedy series. And it's the most nominated freshman comedy with 11 nominations. Wow. Comedy actress also, we nailed it. Um, six for six, Gene Smart Hacks, Io Debris, The Bear, Quinta Brunson, Abbott Elementary, Kristen Wiig, Palm Royale, Maya Rudolph, Lutz, and Selena Gomez, on Only Murders in the Building. Both Maya and Selena getting in for the first time for those shows, even though it's not the first season. So um, a little promotion for those two. Yeah, and there were supposed to be five nominees here, right? Same with comedy actor, but so I guess one of these had a tie maybe, and, and then they, they made the other one six as well. Am I am I correct in assuming that? I think I'm so. not I guess sure. They, they, don't, I, they don't tell you if it's a tie, do they? Yeah. They just have an extra nominee. Well, we weren't so uh, spot on for comedy actor. We had the top four, Jeremy Allen White, Martin Short, Steve Martin, and Larry David. But then we have to go all the way down to nine um, for DeFerro. Winnetai got in for Reservation Dogs and Matt Berry for What We Do in the Shadows in the race. That was a surprise. So they Indeed. skipped over Theo James, Kelsey Grammer, Jerrell Jerome, Patrick Bramall. <laughs> so um, a little surprise uh, in, in that departments but i mean they both both the actors that got in got in for best comedy series as well so i guess it's not too shocking that the actors that missed out were from the gentleman fraser i'm a virgo and colin from accounts shows that the emmy voters didn't didn't bite on did colin from accounts get anything at all i i mean i, I don't absolutely believe love, so i love that show better luck in season two i'm so happy Which, for that know, you know, better luck in season two is very much a thing because like some shows that have never gotten in before got in and got in a lot, you know, so, you know, a, a season two windfall, you never know these days. I wonder if the fact, speaking of a season two windfall, you know, you wonder, we see the 23 nominations for the beer breaking the record and it looked like it could have been even more that there were a lot of the guest actors didn't didn't make the cut, but you wonder if the fact that there has been a little bit more of a lukewarm reception to season three 
uh, is going to impact this the uh, the season two numbers uh, in terms of voting. I uh, you know I tend to think it could, and I think Hacks is going to benefit. From that. Yeah, I, I think it's a close race. Hacks and um, Hacks and the Bear. I still give the edge to the Bear. I mean, especially when we topped off this um, discussion with the fact that the Bear just broke a record, right, for most comedy nominations. 23 uh, over yeah i thought over, for sure uh, abby months. elliott would get in i i'm i'm extremely shocked to see her off um especially because you know th they were probably watching season three when they were voting for season two or or did season three come out after it was uh, after after okay because she has this killer episode i know ray you love oh, episode eight. Oh my god yeah so she the i mean she's gonna get in next year 100 percent, she'll be in next year well, let's get into that category because she was the biggest snub in, in that lineup. Our odds had Hannah Einbinder, Meryl Streep, Shirley Ralph. They all got in. And then Abby was fourth, so she missed. And then Janelle James, Liza Colonzias from The Bear, she did get in. Um, and then it was Carol Burnett's legend from Palm Royale who stole Abby's slot. So surprising, <laughs> but not surprising that if anyone's going to do it, it's it's going to be Carol Burnett's. I actually had Allison Janney um who yeah me too. a strong choice as well but and then poor lisa and walter she just she just can't get in for avid i'm surprised that if one of the actresses from the bear was going to get in it was it was liza and not abby um i mean i'm 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 happy that it's liza and she deserved it but um i thought abby was a slam dunk you interviewed liza so you you gave you gave her the uh the extra vote she needed of course, I interviewed Abby too, and completely oh. screwed, I completely screwed her. <laughs> it'll be it'll be really interesting if Hannah Einbinder wins this. I could just imagine her going on stage and you know thinking like I just won an acting award against Meryl Streep and Carol Burnett. Like that would oh my god be a wild experience for any actor. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, speaking of Liza, the way that season two was, they had this focus on each character. And Liza had that great episode of karaoke. Did Abby get her own episode? I don't remember Abby. No, an episode. she didn't. So no, it was her episode of season three. It was everyone that worked in the kitchen that had their own episode. So I think maybe that really was uh, a benefit for Liza. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe. Great. I mean, just an emotional performance. Yeah. Um, it's so interesting, though. It tells you everything you need to know about the bear that People think, oh, well, only 23. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I almost thought they were going to get 25 or 26. It, it is actually kind of comforting uh, to know that even the shows that got the most nominations, they, I, I wouldn't say they underperformed, but they both missed in places. Like they didn't, they didn't run the board like something like Succession did. Um, you know, they, they missed gettable nominations, which is, actually a good thing because it means the voters were spreading the wealth to other shows like they were watching other shows that's true yeah people thought it would get four supporting actors and it only got two for lionel and for evan i have to believe that people were paying more attention this year um, last year everyone was so nervous because of the strikes um that i'm sure awards probably took a back seat to you know like their their, their continued ability to support themselves this year, yeah, you know, that was all, that was all, all that anxiety was gone. Now that I think of it, maybe that actually contributed to more of the spreading the wealth because those, those actors and writers being out of work for several months last year, they, they might have watched more television than they do in uh, other years. It's true. Yeah. Well, there's a little bit of a theme here with, um, the the bear because if you go to comedy supporting actor now um also snubbed were oliver platt who we had in third place and maddie matheson in seventh um they were passed over instead the lineup is evan mossbach work for the bear tyler james williams abbott elementary lionel boyce for the bear paul rudd only murders in the building paul downs for hacks and bowen yang gets back in for saturday night live but I'm realizing now that you have to be cooking in the kitchen to get a nomination for the bear. Um, again, we have two other people, Oliver, Maddie, and Abby. None of them are actually cooks on the show. Um, they all have different, different uh, things. So 
I think I think that I think I figured it out. That's that's a very interesting trend in theory. Um, <laughs> but you know, um, yeah, it's interesting to see uh, to see who got it and who didn't. You know, it's also interesting that I wonder if all of the criticism about the beer is not really being a comedy um, got to the writers and got to Chris Storer because in season three you see Maddie Matheson and his partner in crime having lots of comedy scene and, mm -hmm. and you know, having true, being true comic relief for the show. So I almost feel like that was a reaction to criticism. Someone compared Maddie's character to cousin Greg on succession. And I, I totally see it now. Every time he's on screen, I'm like, he's just the silly one. Um, good for a few laughs in every episode, but yeah, otherwise it's, it's quite a dramatic show. I do think oh, completely. The, the I do think the specific nominations are actually a testament to the fact that voters were very much paying attention to the show because like, for instance, Oliver Platt, who is someone who the Emmys love, he's been nominated several times over the course of his career. Uh, he didn't have as much to do necessarily as you know some of these other nominees uh, and they didn't nominate him. Uh, so like, it feels like voters were, were very selective about, you know, oh, I, I love this show. These are the two actors who were really standouts this season. Oliver Platt didn't have as much to do necessarily. Maddie Matheson didn't have as much to do besides occasional comic relief. Uh, and, and, they, and we saw that in the guest categories too. A lot of those, you know, you know, cameo appearances in, in Fishes didn't get in. So, And Oliver Platt, he did get in last year as a guest star, but he was he was in too many episodes in season two. So that's why he had to go supporting I think he probably would have gotten into guest again if he was in a couple less episodes. Uh, I also want to point out Paul W. Downs. I'm so happy. He, this is his first acting nomination, and he 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 won for writing hacks in season one, and and now he's up for for acting. I love that. He's so good. Um, you know, standing against that whole idea of them paying attention, though, Daniel, I I do have to say, it was interesting to see Olivia Coleman get a nomination because she's Olivia Coleman, but. I don't recall her being in more than like one big scene uh, in the whole series. Am I wrong? I, I know she's in season three a lot, but I, yeah. I only recall her being in one season two episode. Mushrooms or something, wasn't she? Right, where she just kind of showed up and you're like, oh my God, it's Olivia Coleman and then she's gone. <laughs> I, I do think that was such a memorable episode and that was such a memorable scene. Um, even though it's very understated and she's peeling mushrooms. Like every time you describe a scene of the bear, it sounds like the most boring thing on earth. And yet when you actually watch it, it's, it's, it's like, oh, why is it Colon Zayas? Uh, she doing karaoke. It's like, okay. But That's when you gross. watch it, it's actually quite remarkable. A lot of the stuff they're able to do with uh, relatively uh, simple uh, uh, setups. Uh, so I, I, I honestly, I think Olivia Coleman deserves that nomination. I think she was phenomenal in that scene, uh, even though it's a very understated scene. Well, moving into drama, the biggest sort of loser of the morning was definitely the curse. It's showing that voters are not watching Showtime. <laughs> They're at least not the curse. No drama series. Emma Stone despite being the reigning Oscar winner, no drama actress, Nathan Fielder, this, the show got zero nominations in general, even for uh, the episode Green Queen, uh, which was so many people considered one of the greatest episodes of TV this year, including myself. I thought maybe it could get in for directing or, or something, but no love for the curse, um, nothing for Loki. Nothing else was too um, surprising, really. I mean, Cosmo Jarvis missed for Shogun, uh, Colin Farrell for Sugar, Carrie Preston for Elspeth, they all missed. Um, Glad to see Idris Elba get nominated. Yeah, he was a he was a good surprise. He was uh, yeah he was so good. I mean he was really that whole show, so it it, it shouldn't have been a surprise because he you know he's in every every second footage in that show. But uh, so you're saying that the curse was cursed? I think it was <laughs> yes. Loki deserved more. It, it did get three below the line nominations, but that season, season two was so good, especially the finale. I'm a, I'm a little bummed for Loki today. Um, it, we mentioned that Shogun did so well, but it did miss um, two gettable nominations for uh, 
supporting actress with Moiko Hoshi and Fumi Nakaido. So um, not a total sweep. And then um, Cynthia Nixon missed for the, the Gilded Age. Mm. Alita Abdallah, The Crown, Nathan Lee in The Gilded Age. So um, nothing too shocking, but it's interesting that Shogun missed a couple gettable nominations, just like we talked about the bear doing the same thing, despite having so many already, it seemed like they sort of missed um, that sweep that sometimes we're, we're used to seeing these days. And what's interesting yeah. is that those missed nominations for Shogun uh, kept it from uh, another record. It came very close, but it, it missed the record for most uh, first year nominations uh, for a series, uh, which um, NYPD Blue had 27 in its first season. Uh, wow. So if it had gotten just like two or three, uh, you know, or, you know, three extra acting nominations or, you know, it would have it would have broken that record. I feel I'm like glad to see uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith do so well with yeah. a show that I really like. nominations. And yeah, as, I especially yeah, especially Maya Erskine did it. Denton was was a champion of that show early on, and I finally watched it a couple months ago, and I loved every single episode. And when when her name came up, I was cheering. When Donald's name came up, I was cheering. And it's what? How many guest stars did it get in? Um, Paul I Dano think five. Paul Dano, John Turturro, Michaela Cole, um, Sarah Paulson, Parker Posey. That's insane. Yeah. Well done. It's gonna be. I mean, they could split votes. I would really love to see Parker Posey win that, though. Um, but I, it's just such a fun show. I mean, we don't get a lot of the shows like that anymore. That are just. It seems like it's just pure entertainment, and it's nice to see the Emmys reward something like that. It's just. <clears throat> it's one of my favorite shows of the of the year um do we feel like they're still gonna when the winners are announced are we still gonna get sweeps like i feel like we're still gonna probably be heading in that direction maybe not in comedy i think the baron hacks could really split things up but it still looks like shogun it's gonna really you know run things on the drama side yeah i'm gonna be predicting shogun to win series actor actress i don't know about supporting actor yet that that's a tough category and then obviously not supporting an actress because it's not in there and then probably writing and directing i mean yeah well, we could see a, a sweep who's the supporting actors front runner now um i don't have that up oh uh elizabeth, oh, Tabiki, elizabeth yes. Tabiki. yeah oh well yeah so it didn't matter who else was nominated anyway then Right. <laughs> I think she's one of the surest, surest things that can happen uh, at the Emmys. I agree. Like her and, and then her and Jamie Lee White. Curtis. And Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, there's there's a few categories that are already locked up. Um, I, I feel like the earth would stop spinning on its axis if Jamie Lee doesn't win for guest. <laughs> and Jeremy Allen White still has not lost <laughs> any televised award show for The Bear, which is absolutely insane. He, he he's not getting nominated for the greatness of his accepted speeches. Let me just say, no. Well, best limited series. Um, not too many surprises here. Um, for for best limited series itself, Baby Reindeer, Fargo, Lessons in Chemistry, Ripley, True Detective, Night Country. So that was our that was our top five at Gold Derby. Yeah, we really expected that to happen. Um, and Fargo had Fargo is an interesting situation because. Um, it did well in the nominations, but it missed uh, some very likely slam dunks that I thought were going to happen. I, I really thought Jennifer Jason Lee would get in and, and she was yeah. and she missed. So, I mean, what, what are your guys thoughts on limited series? Well, it's interesting to see, uh, you know, of these nominees, Baby Reindeer was the, went in as the front runner to win. Uh, and it's the fourth most nominated of the five limited series. So, uh, you know, which is not too surprising because it's not like it doesn't have the production values of some of these other programs, these you know period shows. And, um, you know, so it was never going to be a huge contender in like creative arts races. Um, uh, so it getting but it getting like Tom Goodman Hill in uh, for a supporting actor, uh, that's evidence of how how well received the show was as a whole 
Um, it, it'll be interesting though, if it can come from the fourth most nominated program in the category to still kind of run the board and, and win, win as much as uh, I think it could, it could I, I think it could still speak. Yeah, Baby Reindeer had only submitted four actors and it got all four nominated. Richard Gadd, uh, Jessica Gunning, Nava Mao, and then the one you mentioned, Tom Goodman Hill. So they're 100% for the actors, no misses there. And writing and directing. I mean, it got in It got in everywhere it really could. As Daniel mentioned, yeah. it's not like a... I, I, don't think, I don't think it's going to run the table and win it. I feel like, you know, <laughs> it's going to... I think, I think Richard Gadd uh, Jessica Gunning are, are pretty are pretty safe, but I feel like something like like Fargo or Ripley still have an outside shot. There there could be a shocker there on Emmy. Especially supporting actor, um, I would still love to see Jonathan Bailey win for Fellow Travelers. I know yeah. it didn't get into limited series. That was one of the ones snubbed, but um, he got in. Matt Bomer got in. It got in for um, writing. For writing. So I mean, it wasn't completely glossed over even though it was showtime um so the so they were watching that one and um i think that supporting actor category is is really competitive yeah that yeah, race oh, is wide open yeah that's a wide open i i don't see tom goodman Hill get, you know even being the favorite there at all um what that, about that, there, what there about... was a little bit of a shocker there though with uh Lamorne Morris getting nominated. Uh, that was that was not the Fargo actor that we expected. I I was predicting Lamorne Morris, but he was the one of three Fargo. He was the third of three Fargo actors I had getting in. So I was not I was not expecting him to be ahead of those other uh, yeah. Fargo supporting actors. But I Joe Curie and Sam Sproul. Um, yeah, they were snubbed, and they were Sam. both ranked ahead of him. Sam, oh, I love Sam's performance. I, I really wish he had made it in. Um, what's going to happen in Actress? Because I think some of us were predicting Jessica Lange to win, and she didn't even get nominated. I, I, I'm that... just, I am completely shocked by that. I, but you're right; it was because it was such a late entrance, late entrance, and people probably didn't just didn't watch it. I don't know because we've talked about this before that they just don't nominate actors for TV movies in this category that's combined with limited series. And with Jessica Lang missing out, Kathy Bates missing out, Tony Shalhoub missing out. I mean, these are pe people they love to give awards to. If none of those can get in for a movie, I feel like I'm just never, ever, ever going to do that again. I'm like, I refuse to nominate someone from a movie in this category. Um, it Daniel it Radcliffe got in last year, though. Yeah. Yeah. For weird. OK, fine. <laughs> no, but like, but if you're going to make predictions, like, you know, if you don't predict Daniel Radcliffe, that's just one you miss. But if you predict all these actors from Great Lillian Hall and, and uh, Monk, then you miss like three. Yeah. You know, it, you're, you're better oh. off not predicting any actors from. And if you're a prestige movie, just go theatrical because you're going to, no matter what, you're going to have a better shot at Oscars than you will at Emmys at this point. I was going to say Dan, uh, Radcliffe in, in that film as well. That movie just had so much more um, attention and, and buzz around it than Mr. Monk's Last Case. It's like, okay, cute, fine. Um, and then The Great Lillian Hall, as we said, it came out the last day of eligibility. Um, and it wasn't like it was like this incredible attention-seeking action film. It was like a quiet drama that probably, <laughs> I mean, she could have possibly been more competitive at the Oscars than than she she was in this TV movie race. We should uh, just do a moment of silence for the best TV movie category because all five of these nominations or nominees are the only nominations for the for the movies like no actors, no writers, no directors, nothing below the line. Mr. Monk's Last Case, Quiz Lady, Red, White and Royal Blue, Scoop and Unfrosted. I mean, that's unbelievable that that's the only nomination. Yeah, yeah it's wild. And I, this after we saw like kind of a renaissance for TV movies, you know, slightly last year with, you know, Prey getting multiple nominations, Weird Al getting multiple nominations. Uh, so it, it's 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 really depressing. Like, you know, I mean, just watch more TV movies and, and uh, you know, and especially with 
more streaming movies making this category actually more competitive than it's been in previous years. Uh, you know, they should they should just watch more movies and and just award them somewhere. Especially because they take so much less time to watch. I mean, there's so much <laughs> yeah, that it takes so much time to watch a season of all of this stuff. You feel like they could at least squeeze in some movies, but they uh, should put they should put Black Mirror back in the movie category. I mean, it it at least got a writing nomination. Black Mirror, Jonah Zoffel did. I'm I'm surprised that Tony Shalhoub didn't. Isn't he like a four time winner? Mm -hmm. I guess there he, he is technically to nominated. He is a producer on the film, so he did at least get a nomination there. I well, wasn't a huge fan of Unfrosted. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know. <laughs> what, what do you think of the um, the current batch of nominees then? We've got Matt Bomer for Fellow Travelers, Richard Gadd, Baby Reindeer, John Hamm, Fargo, Tom Hollander, Feud Capote versus the Swans, and Andrew Scott Ripley. I was unsure if Feud could actually get in for the nominations. Um, and I sort of bet money that it, it wouldn't get in. So I said it won't get in anywhere. And it did decently well. Um, yeah, got nominations. Yeah. yeah, who do you think is the front runner here? Is it is it Gad or is it John Hamm? Um, since those- It's a very competitive category, really. Or Andrew Scott. I mean, and, Andrew Scott could, could win, I think, as well. This is a, a really, really strong five. Um, yeah. And another, you know, I, I, I said Tom Hollander was, was a lock because of the whole, you know, putting on a, a performance uh, in feud. But Richard Gadd is just so, you know, he's so hot right now. And it's it's going to be hard for me to predict anyone other than Richard Gadd. Yeah. Although Especially, I, I said the same thing after Ripley, that Andrew Scott's got that locked up, you know. <laughs> What's but. interesting is to look at, you know, how the shows did with the actors branch or, um, you know, Obviously, Baby Reindeer, we talked about how it maxed out on acting nominations. It got everyone in who they submitted. Uh, so that bodes well for Richard Gadd. Um, I'd say Ripley, even just getting those two acting nominations, that was that was its ceiling. I think uh, it got both uh, Andrew Scott and Dakota Fanning in. Um, so I, that, that bodes well for it. Fargo missing so many supporting nominations, even like, you know, Jennifer Jason Lee, like, you know, that was a surprise. Actors were really hit and miss on Fargo, so I'm not sure John Hamm uh, is is it. I think it might be between Gad and Andrew Scott. Yeah, and Feud Feud missed a lot of supportings as well. Maybe I mean maybe they split because there's so many of them. Um, best movie mini actress: Jodie Foster, Brie Larson, Juno Temple, Sofia Vergara, and Naomi Watts. I mean that's a great lineup. Also I a real strong five. Yeah, so I mean, Jody's been our front runner. Um, I think some people are leaning towards Brie as well. Um, but Juno, so Sophia, and Naomi, I, I mean, nothing to wave off here. If I was a voter, Juno Temple would get my vote. I thought she was absolutely phenomenal, and I didn't. I wasn't over the top about Ted Lasso and especially her character, but this she wowed me. Um, but I don't think she's going to win. I think it, it may go to Brie Larson. She was out there campaigning like crazy. I don't know if Jodie Foster campaigned very much for True Detective. Maybe she did, and I, I just missed it. She's not a campaigner. That's just not her style uh, as, as, as an actress. I, I You know, I, I, I think there could be a, a real dark horse here in Sofia Vergara, too. Don't discount that, that she stretched so much after being the being the regular on Modern Family to she's amazingly good in this film and really transformed herself. And then, but you're right. It's probably between Jody and Brie. You know, I had some doubts in True Detective and how that would perform. And it did really well. Um, it got in really where it needed to. So I, I still feel like Jody's probably the front runner, even though she isn't a campaigner. Um, it doesn't always matter if you're Jody Foster. She's like a Frances McDormand. She can just stay home and watch and watch things roll in if she wants. Mm -hmm. to. True Detective even got in for best music and lyrics for the John, John Hawks. Hawks. Yeah, John Hawks duly nominated as an actor and a songwriter. I've loved him since Deadwood. And one of the most interesting races for me is uh, supporting actor because I don't know where this is going to go because Robert Downey Jr. He's been our front runner, but the sympathizer. He's the only nomination, right? Did they get in for anything else? Nope, just him. 
And then we've got Jonathan Bailey, fellow travelers, who I would vote for if I was in the Academy. And then we've got Tom Goodman Hill for Baby Reindeer, the one of the top limited series. John Hawks, True Detective. Lamorne Morris, as we talked about earlier, Fargo. Lewis Pullman for Lessons in Chemistry. And Treat Williams for Feud, Capote versus the Swan. So that's a, that's a tough race. I'm kind of leaning towards Jonathan Bailey just because I don't, like, nothing seems dominance. The people that are in the dominant series don't have as dominant of roles. So this is a tough category. Jonathan Bailey, I mean, he's basically a, a co-lead in Fellow Travelers and he won the Critics' Choice Award already. So he's already a winner for this role. I'm, I'm predicting him easily. I don't think this is a category I'm going to be putting too much thought into. I would, I would watch Jonathan out for, I would watch out for Lewis Pullman. They did, uh, 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 Lessons in Chemistry did well. Uh, you know, did well with the actors branch. It didn't miss anything uh, major that it was expected to get. Um, uh, you know, and he has he has he, he has a very he's not he doesn't have the screen time that Jonathan Bailey has, but um, he has such a pivotal role on the show. It's true. Yeah, and they killed Tom, him off very early. Tom Goodman Hill, and if Baby Ranger sweeps, he could win. But we talked in another slugfest about how his character is so unlikable and just ah. not a not a villain you like like jessica gunning's character this is a villain you don't like okay. so that and it's that not a theatrical happen. villain it's not you know he's very, very understated you know, it, it's a very good performance but it's it's not like that mustache twirling kind of uh you know extravagant villain that uh, often does well at awards you know it, it's very like the, the, the grooming the grooming he does of of the Richard Gad character is is just so unsettling and realistic. So it's not it's not like a uh, you know he he doesn't get to you know put on these these acting fireworks. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is I mean it is a fantastic performance. It's just unfortunate for him that like he's so good that he just makes us feel gross. So <laughs> yeah. It's hard to vote for a character like that, even though and look past that and and into the actor. So it's it's interesting. Um, and supporting actress, uh, this also is uh, interesting. I feel like Jessica Gunning is gonna be gunning for that Emmy uh, for oh, yeah. Baby Reindeer. I um, think I think she's the heavy favorite. Yeah, but then we got I mean, no, no pun intended. Lily Gladstone under the bridge. Um, the only nominee for that show. Mm -hmm. I love that show. I, I wish Me it would have gotten more. Um, oh, under the bridge was cool. incredibly underappreciated. Yep. Diane Lane, so Mal, and uh, Kaylee Reese, True Detective. Kaylee Reese was our front runner for most of, you know, this Emmy season, and then Jessica Gunning came along. So, are those the top two? Do you think Diane Lane? A lot of people love that performance. Um, I, I, it's hard to look past Jessica Gunning here. The problem yes. with with feud is that is that the actresses all kind of blended together. Yeah. To some degree it's hard to tell them apart um so it's hard to I, i'm almost surprised that diane got in um but uh jessica gunning i mean that's just uh she just went at this with such gusto that's a once in a lifetime performance i i would be shocked if she lost and netflix actually had an event for her back during fyc season just her just her and it was sold out i, I don't think i've ever seen that before where it was just no. a, one performance and she i mean she killed it and she another this is another example of a co-lead going down and supporting i mean she's she could have gone in lead and got and gotten in there although i don't know if she could have won lead like she can probably win supporting i think, it was I think she would have I, th I think she would have won lead i think uh the baby reindeer enthusiasm is so much that she would have i mm -hmm. think i think she wins wherever they put her so uh, so i i think yeah, that this is one of the easier categories in terms of like a category I'm not going to think too much about. Like, no, yeah, I'm I'm going to predict Jessica yeah. Gunning, um, and I, I I really don't. It would be a major upset if anyone else. Nava Mao is great, but you know, <laughs> she's she doesn't have nearly the gravitas of her co-star. Unfortunately, it's mm -hmm. not not the same role. And then getting down into reality variety, um, a lot we can skip over. I mean, yeah, Saturday Night Live last week, tonight with John Oliver, yada, yada, like all the talk shows that you think we're going to get in all got in. Um, some interesting things down in competition series, the traders did get into best reality competition show, along with The Amazing Race, RuPaul's Drag Race, Top Chef, and The Voice. 
can it take down RuPaul's Drag Race like Lizzo did a couple years ago? It's very possible. Um, I guess the difference would be, you know, Drag Race is very inspirational and, and it's it's a very positive show. And the Traders is more campy and, and not as serious. So I'm going to be predicting Drag Race, but the Traders could do it. And by the way, I'm so bummed about Survivor getting in. There's one show here I would take out in a heartbeat. I'm not going to say it on camera. And put in a survivor, but at least Jeff Probst got in for host. Yeah, I think uh, I think RuPaul's Drag Race probably wins again. Uh, the the category I looked at, uh, I wanted to see how if the Traders was in there, and it's not, which was best casting. Um, uh -huh. And reality TV is all about the casting, uh, so the fact that it didn't make the cut there makes me think, okay, maybe not this year. In well, one casting. It won casting the year that it did not even get nominated for a series. So that's interesting. Um, but it's also it's also the only um, series in this race that is casting people that are already famous. So it's it's really dealing with, you know, people's managers and things like that. When I interviewed the casting agents, um, the one who was nominated for it, who won the Emmy, um, Last year, she said like she didn't really even cast those people. That, that was like more negotiations. They really won casting for the non-famous people. And now it's all famous people. Um, and, and that being said, I don't know, even though this is a reality uh, category, I don't know if they like a cast of reality stars. Like, are they going to vote for them to win? I'm not sure. By the way, uh, I'm looking at the casting category. The Golden Bachelor got in. That was actually a, a good show, everyone. So I'm happy for this nomination yeah and that i mean and that was unique casting even though it was a failed marriage i mean it could even win <laughs> reality casting if if they watched it and well clearly they watched it. it's nominated squid game also got in uh the challenge for squid game the challenge for casting and they had they cast a lot of people 456 people <laughs> yeah i mean they should get in just for that um even Yikes. though even though i only remember like three of them <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then reality hosts, that's another one. Can Alan Cumming take down RuPaul, Char RuPaul and, and end that streak that it seems to never be ending? It's it's RuPaul in there and then the Shark Tank guys um, and ladies. Um, Alan Cumming, Kristen Kish for Top Chef. She just picks right up <laughs> uh, that, that mantle. And then Jeff Probst is back for a survivor after 13 yes. years. I wrote that article up immediately because I was so happy. 13 years. He never lost. He won four in a row the very first four years of this category. And then they just snubbed him 13 times in a row. And now he's back. So it's RuPaul is also undefeated in this category, eight for eight. So we're going to have two undefeated people going against each other. Someone's going to lose. It's interesting that last year they brought Survivor back into competition series, but not Jeff Probst. And then this year they nominated Probst and not Survivor. It's very strange. I think Alan Cumming has got a real good shot this time. Um, yes. he's, got, he's, he's a really popular guy in Hollywood, and he does such a great job on this show. I feel like if anybody's going to upset RuPaul, this is the year. Yeah. I think so, too. I think it, I think the traders has a better shot at reality host than it does at reality program. Uh, so I, I think, I think Alan Cumming has a real shot. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have time to give these all more thoughts and we'll have slugfest in the future where we're really thinking hard and, and giving stronger opinions about who will win and who we're going to predict. Um, this is just sort of our first reactions to getting this, this news this morning. So anyone have any, Final thoughts about surprises, likes, dislikes, hopes, and dreams. <laughs> um, just a couple of thoughts about shows that we didn't talk about um, because they didn't really get in. Um, so you think you can dance came back this season. The one category that I'm surprised it's not in, it holds the record for the most wins. It, it's not nominated for choreography, um, mm. which is shocking. It's won that like 12 times. Um, and a couple other shows that I'm disappointed didn't do well. Like sci-fi has been much more embraced by the Emmys than it has in the past. I don't know why a TV institution like Star Trek doesn't get the kind of love that other shows get. Uh, you know, this year, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, which had an incredible acclaim this past season, uh, it only got in for sound editing, um, not even visual effects. 
um, and uh, Lower Decks, the animated series, uh, also only got in for sound editing. So it's uh, I, I do I do wish these shows would get more appreciation when you know you get superhero shows, sci-fi shows, epic fantasies uh, wow. getting in, but you know Star Trek, one of the great TV legacies of all time, uh, can't get arrested. It just it's just weird. Is that the one? Should we go ahead? What? I said, is that the one with Yoda? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, a three-body problem in for best series, and then it didn't get anything else like in the major categories at all. I didn't. Uh, how did that do in the below the line three-body problem? Because I, I found that interesting. It's got how it's many? got three six total. Six total. Okay, but no acting. Um, and I no hope it got in for visual effects because those uh, special effects were absolutely amazing. Yeah, there's horses that are like pooping upside down in the air being lifted into the air that was um discussed at length uh at, at one of the emmy fyc events that i that i went to they were very proud of those visual effects so well yeah, three body problem got in for um cinematography picture editing uh main title design uh sound editing and sound mixing no visual effects doesn't seem it was robbed Anybody uh, surprised that uh, Kelsey Grammer didn't get in for, for the Frasier reboot? No. What was the comedy directing multicam? The Miss Pat show again. Oh, again. Okay. Good for good for Miss Pat. Pat got in for directing, just in general, for the com for comedy. Yes, because of the there's the uh the rule that one multicam has to get nominated for directing each year. Um the one person I wanted to mention. I don't know if it's my favorite nomination of the day, but I'm really, really happy for Dominic West, The Crown. This is his first nomination. He's been working for decades in television. The Wire, The Affair, The Hour, The Crown, all the the shows. And he finally gets a nomination. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to win, but hey, it took him long enough. I don't. I, uh, I love the fact that you called it the the shows. <laughs> the the shows. To Ray's point, I, I just don't think... Frazier was that well received. And I don't think Kelsey Grammer himself has the gravitas that he once held no. in Hollywood. No, no, I was actually, I thought it was, I, I was, I wasn't glad he didn't get nominated, but I, I don't think it was, would have been deserved either. So um, sometimes it's good. It's good to see people not necessarily get rewarded just on reputation. Although, all bets are off with Carol Burnett. I'm sure, sure glad she got one. Yeah. I love a good theme song. And the nominees for theme music are Feud, Lessons in Chemistry, Masters of the Air, Palm Royale, and Shogun. I'm guessing Shogun's going to win that one, but I, I can't wait to watch all of these back to back to back and see which did, one. Did, did, uh, did Lessons in Chemistry get one for, for main title? Main title yes. theme music, yeah. yeah. And, 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 God, it was. It was what about main title movie. design? That's one of my favorites as well. The the, the main title design for Lessons in Chemistry was one of the best I've ever seen. It also got in for that Lessons in Chemistry for main title design, as well as Fallout, Palm Royale, Shogun, Silo, and Three Body Problem. Nice. And speaking of music, uh, you know, one thing we should be on the watch for is uh, a EGOT alert. We've got uh, Paysec and Paul uh, nominated for their song from Only Murders in the Building. Uh, they could close out their EGOT if they if they win. They'll be the 20 and 21st, I believe, EGOT. I think they'll win that category. That was, especially with how much love Only Murders got today. And that seems like, uh, I don't want to say a weaker category, but I mean, they're up against Girls 5 Eva, Saturday Night Live, Maya Rudolph's Mother's Day song, um, The Tattooist of Auschwitz, and True Detective Night Country. I mean... Only Murders is really sticking out to me as as the front runner here. I would say it's between that and Maya Rudolph. They do like a ridiculous SNL song. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's an EGOT alert, we, we should alert Chris Beecham to be on mm -hmm. standby. Oh, he's, he already knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right, well, if that's all, um, the Emmy ceremony is September 15th. If that's not up in the prediction center as soon as this video comes out it will be very shortly um and you go make your predictions get higher scores than the rest of us and 
embarrass us all, but uh, which is not that difficult. <laughs> we'll be looking forward to uh, September 15th and we'll have plenty more of these discussions as well as more interviews to come with nominees that will be airing right here on Gold Derby. So tune in for those and thanks for watching.